Hello everyone, today we'll be taking a look at six new decks for the upcoming Explorer format, which is a brand new format on Arena, which will eventually coincide with the paper format of Pioneer, but for now he's using all the cards that are already available on Arena, and then they will add more cards to the format over time, until Explorer will be the same as Pioneer, and Explorer will cease to exist. So we can already build Explorer decks in the client, but as of the time of recording we cannot play in events yet, so I've decided to convert six popular Pioneer decks into their Explorer counterparts, so you can maybe get an idea what the metagame will look like, and so you can copy some of these deck lists to play them on day one of the new format. If you want to see any particular deck list, you can always skip ahead using the timeline or the links in the video description. Our first deck is going to be Naya Winota, which is a creature combo deck built around Winota and join our forces, which can cheat human creatures into play whenever we attack with a non-human creature. We have to make a few changes as opposed to the Pioneer build, as we don't have Elvish Mystic at one mana, a powerful accelerant, we do still have Lenor Elves, and then I've added a few copies of Gilded Goose as another way to ramp, and as an O2 flyer also good at enabling Winota. Then we've got the full playset of Prosperous Innkeeper, which can help ramp into Winota and attack in the same turn, so that's why it's such a popular choice in this archetype. And then I've also added the full playset of Paradise Druid as an extra accelerant with a bit of built-in protection thanks to Hexproof, so we can potentially play a turn 3 Esika's Chariot, which makes a pair of cat tokens when it enters the battlefield, more non-humans to enable Winota, and we can also copy our tokens when the Chariot attacks, which synergizes nicely with the newly printed Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which makes a 2-2 Goblin Shaman that makes a treasure when it attacks on the first chapter, then lets us discard up to two cards and then draw that many, so we can find find Winota, and eventually transforms into a reflection of Kiki Jiki, an additional non-human that can also copy our creatures, especially nice with Enter the Battlefield abilities. Then I've also added two copies of Legion Warboss, which I used to like in the historic versions of Winota, as it can make multiple goblin tokens to enable her. And then we also have, of course, our humans to cheat into play, starting with the full playset of Brutal Cathar, which is also our removal spell of choice, also Werewolf, and we do have a small Werewolf theme in this deck, as we're also playing the full playset of Tovalar's Huntmaster, making a pair of wolf tokens when it enters the battlefield, and gets even more powerful during the night, as it can also make wolf tokens when it attacks, and can maybe be used as removal. And then we have a few ways to increase our damage output, with Blade Historian giving our attacking creatures double strike, and then Angras Marauders also doubles our damage. The Historian is cheaper at 4 mana, but of course we cannot use green mana to cast it, whereas the Marauders is 7 mana, playing one of each because we don't really want to double up on Blade Historian, as double strike doesn't stack, but at 4 mana might still be slightly more realistic to get it in play if we don't cheat it into play with Winota. And then the mana base is pretty straightforward, plenty of pathways in each color, and then some shock lands as additional mana fixing. So that's Naya Winota, a creature combo deck. Next up we're going to take a look at a creature aggro deck with Monoret. And this deck looks quite a bit different from the Pioneer counterpart, which has access to Monastery Swisspear to complement Soulscar Mage as a cheap prowess creature, which will then play well with burn spells. Since we don't have access to Swisspear on Arena, we're instead going with a more creature-heavy approach that more resembles the historic versions of Monoret, where we're playing Annex Hardened in the Forge, gets bigger the more Red Devotion we have, so plays well with cards like Torbran, adding triple Red Devotion, as well as letting our Red Permanence output more damage. We've got Goblin Chain Whirler adding triple Red Devotion, great against the various One Toughness creatures from the Winota deck, and then of course Amber Cleave can be a great finisher when paired with Annex, or really any of our creatures. And then, since we don't have access to Eidolon of the Great Revel, which is a great 2-drop for red decks in Pioneer, it is also much better for us to play Burning Tree Emissary, because not only do we not need to worry about facing Eidolon, which is great at punishing cards like Burning Tree, but since Burning Tree adds red and green to our mana pool, which doesn't let us cast the double red 2-drop, we can instead play cards like Robber of the Rich as a 2-2 with haste providing card advantage, or Karizev. And then at one mana, of course, we still have the full playset of Kumano, an excellent new addition for any mono red decks across multiple formats. And then the full playset of Fanatical Firebrand, which is an extra creature adding devotion for Annex, also plays well with Annex when we sacrifice it, as it will leave behind a Seder token. 
and then I wanted an extra one drop to kind of fill out the curve and I landed on Foundry Street Denizen which will get one additional power whenever a red creature enters the battlefield under our control plays well with a lot of our cards like Kumano when it transforms as well as Annex when we maybe play a second copy adding four Seder tokens to the board and can also benefit from Torbran and Embercleave. And then a mana base includes Castle Embereth to pump our team, four copies of Den of the Bugbear as a creature land, and Ramanap Ruins to maybe burn the opponent out. So that's a mono red, a creature aggro deck. Next up it's time to take a look at blue-white control, which hasn't really changed much from its pioneer counterpart. We're using a Yorion Sky Nomad as companion, so we're playing 80 cards in our main deck. And the only real change I had to make was now play three copies of Shattered Sky instead of Supreme Verdict, but this is only a temporary addition, as now with the upcoming Streets of New Capenna, this will be replaced by Depopulate, which should be a little bit better, as we're less likely to face multicolored creatures as opposed to creatures with power 4 or greater. Then taking a quick look at our deck, we've got some removal with Portable Hole, March, a great addition from Kamigawa, especially nice when facing creature lands, which blue-white control can be pretty weak against. We've got Fateful Absence as more spot removal, couple counter spells with Jory Disruption, Dovin's Veto, and then at 3 mana Absorb, gaining some life as well. Omen of the Sea plays nicely with Yorion as companion, and then a couple Planeswalkers with Narset providing card advantage, and then the Wandering Emperor at 4 mana as removal, and at 5 mana Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Then we've got Memory Deluge for more card draw. And then topping off our curve, Shark Typhoon can be cycled, leaving behind a Shark token. And then Farewell as an extra sweeper, that's quite versatile. And then our mana base, tons of uh, utility lands of course with our various castles. We've got the channel lands from Kamigawa, Field of Ruin to blow up opposing creature lands perhaps. And then our own creature land with Hall of the Storm Giants. So that's blue-white control. Next up we have a red-black sacrifice, and this is more of an artifact sacrifice deck. And this also didn't need to change compared to the pioneer versions. So this is basically a one-to-one -one recreation. Maybe Urborg and the mana base is different, so we're just playing an extra swamp. But uh, a classic deck using Witch's Oven plus Cauldron Familiar. We've got the Anvil making various 1-1 one -one tokens and rewarding us for sacrificing artifacts the Synthesizer for card advantage, and then we've got the Epicure providing a blood token when it enters, so a good enabler. We've got Thought Seize as hand disruption, Fatal Push and Vaulted Surge as removal, and then Deadly Dispute for more card advantage and treasure tokens, and then Mayhem Devil, another great payoff for any sacrifice deck. And then we also get to play with Gigantha as companion, a few creature lands in the mana base, and then some more channel lands as well. So that's Red Black Sacrifice. Next up we get to look at Red Black Midrange for the midrange lovers out there. And this is a deck playing a lot of high powered cards. So we've got our Thoughtseize similar to the Red Black Sacrifice build as well as Fatal Push. And then more removal with Bloodsheaf's Thirst. At 2 mana we don't have Dreadbore quite yet, so I've replaced it with Angrath's Rampage, which can also get rid of artifacts, maybe get rid of a Witch's Oven from the opponent. Then the Harvester, a 2-drop that can pressure control decks, leaves behind a Blood Token, synergizes nicely to enable Revolt for Fatal Push, as well as just giving us a bit more card selection. And then against creature decks we can also use it as removal. Croxa as discard can eventually escape it. Also plays well with cards like Harvester that will end up in our graveyard. And then at 3 mana we've got the Trespasser, which can eat up creatures to gain some life, and will require the opponent to discard a card if they want to target it. And then a Bone Crusher Giant, of course, also kind of a 2-drop if we use the Adventure first. And then the full play set of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which is just proving to be a card that fits into a ton of different archetypes. And then a 1 of Call Against Command as an extra way to maybe deal with artifacts and maybe get back one of our powerful creatures from the graveyard. And then we're topping off our curve with a few 4-mana Planeswalkers, like Sorin the Mirthless, providing card advantage and making life-linking flying vampire tokens and Chandra, Torch of Defiance, which can kind of do everything with all her various abilities. Now we don't have access to Kalitas at 4 mana, so that's one card we're also missing next to Dreadbore. And then a mana base has Castle Lockthwain for card advantage, a few creature lands as well, Hive and Den, and the same channel lands as in the Sacrifice deck, so the mana base is quite similar. So that's Red Black Midrange, and then finally we're taking a look at Mono Blue Spirits, 
which is missing one key card compared to the Pioneer build, which is the Mausoleum Wanderer as a powerful one mana spirit, but we're still playing the Snowlands with Faceless Haven, as well as Ascendant Spirit, which is the reason to play Snowlands. And then we've got some flash creatures with Spectral Sailor at 1 mana, can also draw cards. And then at 2 mana there's Rattle Chains, giving our spirits hexproof when it enters. And the Spectral Adversary from Midnight Hunt can also be a nice mana sink. Two copies of Shackle Geist to control opposing creatures. Supreme Phantom as a nice payoff, pumping up all our spirits. And then I've added two copies of Nebelgast Herald, which we can also flash in, so plays well alongside our counter spells and can keep opposing creatures tapped down. And then we've got a few counter spells with Geist Light Snare, getting a discount if we control a spirit, as well as a discount if we control an enchantment. And we do have four enchantments with Curious Obsession, which plays well with our cheap flying creatures and counter spells to protect. And then we have two copies of Spell Pierce as another counter spell and two copies of Lofty Denial, which benefits from controlling flying creatures, and then our interaction besides counterspells also includes four copies of Fading Hope as a cheap bounce spell, could also play Brazen Borrower as a non-spirit, that's quite nice, and there's a few other three mana spirits we could be playing. So that's Mono Blue Spirits, once we get access to cards like Spell Queller, it might be worth it to splash white, maybe even green for Collected Company, and add more three mana spirits to the deck. So yeah, hopefully that gave you a nice overview of a few different Explorer decks, starting off with a new format here. And let me know in the comments which of these you would like to see in action first, or if there's any other popular Pioneer decks that can easily translate to this new format, or cards in general you're excited to see in action. So that'll do it for today's video, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.